What makes a game fun? What makes a game fun? In your opinion. That's a fucking hard question. <laughs> what, in your opinion, makes a game fun? Uh, I am actually without a current definition. My long time definition was um, multiple, uh, increase in the number of ways that the game was responsive to player actions in the state. Uh, it uh, was grounded on sort of a bunch of research that I'd read about in, in uh, behavioral science, but was fine. It's actually that's a fine set of heuristics for making single player games. Doesn't really fit with a lot of what we're doing right now. And I sort of feel like I'm in the middle of rethinking my sort of fundamental formulations for what makes a good game. Uh, and once I have that, I will tell people. But right now, I'm sort of in the middle of trying to reorganize my thinking about what makes a good game. What, in your opinion, makes a game fun? <clears throat> well. What I think makes a game fun is not necessarily the game itself, but the people you play with. Very concise. Uh -huh. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> what makes a game fun? There's a lot of things that make a game fun. Um, the things that make the, the many... Okay, there's quite a few things. If it, if it stimulates your mind, if it makes, it makes the player think, eh, that makes a game fun and or good. Um, if it stimulates your reflexes, um, that makes the game fun, good. Um, if it challenges you and makes you feel good after, you're, after you've completed it, that makes the game fun. If it's something unique and tells a story that hasn't been heard or whatever, that makes the game fun. If it is emotional in some way and, and, and pulls the player in emotionally, that makes the game fun. Um, and of course, just saying something that hasn't been said before and doing something that hasn't been done before, even in the smallest degree, can make a game really fun too. Um, but I'd say the easiest way, the blanket, the blanket statement is, the easiest way for a developer to make a game fun is to make it for themselves. Because then if it's fun for you, there's a really good chance that it's going to be fun for a lot of other people. Uh, so that's usually what matters either way. For you, what makes a game fun? In your opinion, uh, uh, that is that is an unanswerable question. I you know. know it when you play it. All right. That's the only way. Yeah. That's why. I, I don't know. It's it's a weird. I think that I think that's the weirdest part of making games is that there, there really isn't. I mean, anybody who comes to you saying this is how you make a game fun, like they're they're lying or they're a terrible person, one of the two. I mean, I don't know. It's it's a very nebulous quality that you're trying to capture through very primitive means, and it's it's really frustrating sometimes and really satisfying when you manage to do it. That's what I pretty much found in any any article which is why i had to ask yeah. what your opinion would be yeah on it. it's a philosophical question i like the, the philosophical <laughs> cop-out answer i'm not gonna answer it it's, depends it's unknowable <laughs> what makes a game fun you know I, I i think it's just that intangible tangible feel when something just feels right you know there are certain games that look really horrible that have terrible graphics and then you touch the controller and you do something and it feels right. It's the same way when you picked up an iPad for the first time and you know you swipe and you zoom and it just it feels good. I, I think there are a ton of games like that um, where you're just having fun because of the way it feels. Super Mario 64 back in the days was an example like that where you know you touch the controller and you're like oh my god it's like an extension of, of my hands. I'm like moving around and having fun even though I'm not fulfilling any quests. What in your opinion makes a game fun? Oh man, I have a few books uh, entirely <laughs> about the theory of fun. I'm a programmer, so I'm very analytical. I want to try to figure out the formula behind fun. Um, I've worked with some other programmers who are adamant that there is no such thing. I, I think there are guidelines. Um, I really, really like, well, there are different types of fun. My, my personal favorite type of fun is a challenging game, something that you can play and challenge yourself and fail at that challenge and then tackle it again and again and again. Uh, Super Meat Boy, if you're aware of that, is one of my favorite games. Maybe I'm a masochist because of that, but I really love the experience of just try, try again, and then bam, you get it. And then you go on to the next thing and bang your head against that wall. Um, or the grinders. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I think there are 
so many different types of, of uh, fun and different types of games that appeal to those different types of fun. Um, it's really hard to answer that question. I think, you know, games can be fun in different ways, but I do think they all have this, this element of challenge and gaminess at their center of uh, trying to solve a problem and tackle a challenge and, and, and build up some kind of skill. Um, and I think that having that in there without letting it become completely masochistic um, is usually the best uh, form for making a game fun. Um, even if you want to make it about a story or something else, have there be some interesting nugget of gameplay that uh, people can really chew on while they're uh, uh, going through your story as well. So pay for pain. Fun time. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We are just kind of paying for uh, torture devices. At least I am. The <laughs> types of games I buy. To me, that, that it's kind of that, that intersection between gameplay, socialization, and storytelling that's really interesting to me. So that's what I that's what I love out of a game is finding is seeing new takes on that um, and enjoying that. Uh, in terms of what makes a game great for me to play, I'll tell you most of the time it's just playing. It. Um, you know, um, I want to be with my with my kids or or you know my wife and they're playing different games and I'm going to play what games allow me to uh, to connect to them. Uh, uh, so I think it's a uh, very personal answer. All right, and finally, what in your opinion makes a game fun? Um, there's a few things. Uh, this is going to sound a little technical, but uh, uh, I think there's a lot of things about fun that you can actually drill down to the specific details. One is, I think, the biggest obstacle to fun is when you don't maintain a consistent interface language with the player. Like, there'll be different interface screens where, like, different buttons with different functionality, or, you know, the B button won't always, like, reverse your last choice on a particular screen. You want to maintain a consistent language with the player through all the actions you're doing in the game, because the moment where they have to stop and think about how to do certain action, because the interface is making it confusing, you've lost them at that point. Like, they're, oh, they're no longer thinking about the game. They're thinking about how to, how to communicate their intention to the game. Um, another element of fun is you don't provide the player with options, either in character creation or in the environment that don't have a uh, game reward payoff or some sort of... Um, a meaningful consequence. And what I mean by that is, so when we're designing the Fallout games and we have those list of skills and perks for the player, we spend a lot of time making sure that all those skills are used, all those different play styles are used. If we introduce reputation mechanics, uh, we spend a lot of effort making sure that each faction in the game react to the reputation properly in a meaningful way. Because as the player picks up on the fact that one particular branch of character creation or one type of character build isn't getting a rewarding experience or the developer sort of playing like token or lip surface to that experience, then it ruins the fun as well. Um, and lastly, what I think is a game fun, and I think is a lot of uh, the fun about a world game um, and a lot of fun we have with Vegas is giving the player as much freedom as possible, just want around to do fun stuff, and the Rockstar games are proof of that too. Just give them a sandbox hold there, they can just run around, uh, things they want to do. Um, don't overly penalize them for things that they want to do that are fun, like if you want to jump off buildings, or climb like the Pittsburgh Bridge, and you know, all those things, just if you provide the opportunity, carry through it. And I believe, Last part of that is make sure the world reacts because there's nothing more fun for a player than seeing people in the environment like stop and look at the player doing this action or specifically comment on th things they've done in areas because that's the, the, the player in the world that they're running around in is more alive. Uh, it's paying attention to them and it recognizes that the players are the star of the show. And I think all those outcomes contribute to the title. All right, well, thank you, Chris. This has been Chris Avalone of Obsidian Entertainment talking with New Meteorites and Lagged. And cut. Ah, oh, I did it one day. I think there are two different sets of things. 
One is about some kind of innovative mechanic, something that is 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 startling and charming. Uh, I'm thinking of a game like um, Auditorium, which is a game in which you position different blocks and get light to go through it in order to make a, a symphony start to play, which is just it's just it's just, it's just delightful. Um, and another one is a game called Continuity, where you're sort of shuffling tiles and you have to get a little man to run through the It's so good, right? Um, so there's that sort of really delightful uh, uh, mechanic. But for me also, of course, there's good storytelling, which one encounters not very often in games, but when it works, it works so beautifully. I'm going to say specifically Portal, but not Portal 2, and uh, Journey. Uh, both of which I think do wonderful things with storytelling and and just when you can really make it work so that you feel that the story is happening to you, oh my god, it's magical. Oh, that's nice. All right, well thank you Gabe. We've been talking to Gabe Newell, co-founder of Valve. You've been watching Lagged. I'm Lauren with New Media Rights and thanks for watching. Thanks Lauren.